Good day, students. Welcome again to an exciting educational video. This is Dr. Luisito Masanga at your service. Shout out and thank you very much to those students from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao who are faithfully and consistently watching my educational video. To these students, a warm round of applause to all of you. Buhay. Today, we are going to discuss about customer-based brand equity. And our learning outcomes for today, we are going to comprehend and totally understand what is this customer-based brand equity model. And secondly, students will be able to learn and synthesize of how to use the customer-based brand equity model uh, to measure brand equity or assess brand equity of a local brand. First of all, customer-based brand equity model was developed by a professor coming from Dartmouth University. He is Professor Kevin Lane Keller. He is responsible in developing this customer-based brand equity and his book is about strategic brand management. Okay? And let us first discuss what is this customer-based brand equity. You know, in, uh, in marketing, we have the trilogy. No? We have the company, we have the competitor, and we have the customer. Now, this model is based on the side of the customer. Why is it that this model was based on the side of the customer? Because the customer dictates quality. If you are the owner or the entrepreneur, you cannot say, that your product or service is of excellent quality. That is very biased. It is only the customers who can perceive the function and the performance of your product, the quality of your product in the market. So this brand equity is based on the side of the consumer, based on the side of the customer. So this model is about measuring the performance, the value of your brand in the perception of consumers. Right. According to Simon Sinek, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Very beautiful. It is the reason why people patronize your product or your service. Before we understand this customer-based brand equity, let us be again straightforward, digesting what is brand equity. Brand equity is the value premium that the company is, or the logo, the product, okay? or the signage or the name of that company is getting from the customers in terms of revenue, in terms of profit. So therefore, it is a, uh, the totality of assets and liabilities attached to the brand name or the logo or symbol which results in the relationship customers have with the brand. In other words, this is brand equity. Let us try to uh, make an example. In a higher education institute, let us take, for example, the University of the Philippines in Diliman, Quezon City. It is a state-owned university, but what is the brand equity of this school? It is you know, perceived by people, by individuals, by parents, 
it is a, a higher educational learning institutes where students are mostly scholars. It is a government funded, but before you can study in that school, you will have the skill, the talent, the knowledge that your GPA average is within the parameters of that school. And because of the progressive system of that school, the brand equity that was retained in the minds of the people is that that school is intended for intellectual students. So that is the brand equity that the University of the Philippines remain in the minds of the consumer. Another example is De La Salle University, Ateneo University. What is the brand equity of this school? Uh, in Ateneo de Manila, uh, mostly uh, families who can afford are belonging to the uh, bourgeoisie families. In De La Salle, these are the elites. And we are referring to De La Salle University, Manila. No? That the tuition fee is very expensive. But what is the brand equity? It is a prestigious and expensive university. So brand equity is the value premium that customers are providing your brand. Even though... Uh, the, even though your brand or even though your price is premium, still the customers prefer your product or service aside from the relationship that the brand is establishing to the consumers like a positive experience relationship wherein consumers become to be loyal consumers. And because of loyal customers, some of these loyal customers will even protect your brand. When your brand is being criticized, these loyal customers will even side on you and, you know, protect your brand. Since we already know the brand equity definition, let us try to consider some salient points of the customer-based brand equity by Keller. It is a model uh, that approaches, you know, brand equity in the perception of the consumer. How the consumer perceives your brand. Is it a positive brand equity or a negative brand equity? The power of the brand lies in what resides in the minds of the customers. Like for example, uh, the customers perceive iPhone, the manufacturer is Apple, computers, perceive that iPhone is a very premium product because it differentiates them from the smartphones because their system is iOS and they are not Android. And the consumer response to the marketing of the brand means to say that in your promotional marketing strategies, customers are magnetized, customers are attracted. They want to participate with the promos, they want to participate with your sales discount, they want to participate and react and response to your direct marketing, they, you know, they are aware uh, of your new product development because of your different advertising campaigns. So that is customer-based brand equity. It is on the side of the consumer. It is how the consumer perceives your brand, whether positive brand equity or negative brand equity. There are four steps 
in brand building. Actually, uh, this is the process, step-by-step you know, -step process of also evaluating the brand equity of a local brand. These are the steps also. Meaning to say, this is the process or stages to build brand building or to create a survey to a local brand about their brand equity. The first is identity. The second is meaning. The third is response. And the fourth is the relationship. We will discuss this one at a time. But in a nutshell, brand identity ensure the identification of the brand with customers and an association of the brand in customer minds with the specific product class or need. Customers can identify your brand, let's say for example iPhone. Ah, if I have an iPhone, I know one of the endearing feature is the security. Sometimes it is being rejected in, you know, uh, in small uh, booth cell phone repair to unlock an iPhone because you be, can be trapped once you have this product because it has a live GPS. And the next is the meaning. The company established the aggregate of brand meaning in the minds of the consumer. Again, it is in the cognitive level, the psychological level of the consumers. That is very important. It is, uh, 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 this brand equity is your corporate, corporate reputation to the public. How you manage your reputation to the public as defined in public relation, right? That is meaning. It has a strategic linking of the tangible and intangible brand association with certain properties. Okay? And then the next is the response, the brand response. It elicits the proper customer responses to this brand identification and meaning, meaning to say, uh, this one and two combined should have a response coming from the consumers. And therefore, the last stage is the brand relationship. What is this? It converts brand response to create an intense, active loyalty relationship between customers and the brand. So meaning to say, because of that response, it creates that relationship. Meaning to say, uh, this identity coupled with the meaning gives response coming from the customer and because of that response, it creates a relationship. Very simple to understand. No? I am R squared. No? Identity, meaning, response, and because of that response, it creates a relationship between the customers and your brand. So in this uh, customer base brand equity model triangle, uh, you can see that the base of the triangle is quite large and the apex is there. So these are the stages. The brand identity signifies who are you? And the brand meaning is, what are you? And the customer response or the brand response is, what about you and the relationship? Now, uh, based on these stages no, of developing a brand equity, there are important things to remember when you are doing a customer-based brand equity model. In the brand identification, 
it involves salience or salience. When you are on the second stage, there is performance and imagery or imagery. And when you are in the brand response, there is judgment and feelings that are involved. And in the brand relationship, there is resonance. We will discuss these ingredients on the different stages of the brand equity model. Now, before we discuss what is inside the triangle on each different stages of the brand equity model, there is uh, on the right side the different branding objective at the, each stage. So these are the stages of the brand development. Here, this is brand equity. What is the objective? The objective is deep, broad, and say deep and broad, brand awareness. So how will you develop awareness? Number one is communication and the different uh, promotional mixes or strategies. You have advertising, there could be broadcast and print, you have public relations, you have sales promotion, you have personal selling, you have social media, marketing, and then you have direct marketing. And also, because we are trying to you know, reach out, trying to retain to the perception, to the minds of the customers, some companies are using corporate social responsibility, corporate shared value, green marketing. Because the advocacy of this company is caring for the environment, caring for the social and economic well-being of their employees and the community as well. All right. So that is uh, the objective once you are doing a brand identity audit or survey or the first process in making a brand equity. All right. Now, on the second stage, meaning, again, there is this performance and imagery that are involved when you are in the second stage. And your objectives is the points of parity and difference, the similarities and differences. So that is your objective. You have to research on that. Okay? And then once you are on the third stage, which is response, there, there are judgments and feelings. What is the objective? It should be positive, accessible reactions. That is your branding objective for that third stage. And of course, on the fourth stage, which is the brand relationship, the ingredient is resonance. And what is your brand objective? Intense, active loyalty. You know? uh, in that uh, last stage, out of the identity effort and meaning effort, there is customer response. And once the customer responded, it will create a relationship. And your objective is intense, active loyalty. So let us discuss uh, brand salience, which is this one. Yeah? At the first stage of the uh, customer-based brand model or customer-based brand equity model, which is brand identity. And there is salience. What is this all about? It measures the awareness of the brand. No? Remember, a highly silent brand has both depth and breadth of awareness. Why so? So that customers always make sufficient, consistent purchases 
as well as always think of the brand across a variety of settings in which it could possibly be employed or consumed. And that is brand salience. And you can see here that it is very wide. The triangle is very wide. It is on the base because that is the foundation, the brand identity. Now, let's go to the next one, uh, which is the meaning. And it involves performance and image three. When we talk about brand performance, it pertains no, to how well the product or the service meets customers, you know, more functional needs. That is, to what extent does the brand satisfy the used, aesthetic, the economic customer needs and wants in the category. So when we say really performance, it is the functionality of the product. How, you know, it is very user-friendly. Uh, there's no problem in terms of the features. There's no problem in terms of the packaging. Uh, the warranty is there. The after-sale service is there. That is, no? When we talk about brand performance, we talk about the three levels of the product from the uh, core benefit of the product, the actual product, which involves the quality, the features, okay, and the augmented product in terms of payment, after sales service, the warranty, right. And when we talk about on the other side, the brand image three, we talk about the extrinsic, the external properties of the product or service, including the ways in which the brand attempts to meet customers' emotional and social needs. It is also a way consumers think about a brand abstractly rather than what it really is. So that is very important. They have a very good image, photography of your brand, you know, that they perceive it and they have an emotions on it that your product and service is a solution to their problems. And when we talk about the third, which is the response, no? and there is judgment. What is this judgment all about? Judgment is about customers' personal opinions about and evaluations of the brand, which consumers form by putting together all the different brand performance and image. So we talk about how the customer really judge your brand. There is perceived brand quality, the perceived brand credibility, there is perceived brand consideration, there is perceived brand superiority. So really, when these are really the attributes, really, it will really ultimately create a response and really later on conceive brand relationship. And let's go to feelings. What is this feelings on the third stage of the response? So brand feelings is about, you know, the customer's emotional responses and reaction to the brand. There could be warmth, fun, excitement, security, social approval, and self-respect. So this is what are involved in the brand feelings. And of course, the resonance. What is this resonance on the relationship side, which is the last stage of the consumer-based brand equity model? Brand resonance is really uh, 
It describes the nature of the relationship the consumer has with the brand. No? If they are really in unison, if uh, they are really on the same page. They are synchronized with each other. So there is, because of that positive response the customer gets from your product, a satisfied, positive customer experience. And now it develops to a loyal customer because of that positive relationship. And again, brand equity is the value premium that the product or service is giving to the company in terms of revenues, in terms of profitability. And of course, as a summary or additional information, this is the first stage of the brand equity. We talk about salience. The foundation is very wide. No? We talk about category, identification, needs, satisfaction. And on the second stage, we talk about performance and image three. There is primary characteristics and secondary features, product reliability, durability. So we talk about the three levels of the product. And image three, these are the user profiles, the purchase and usage, situations, personality and values, history, heritage, and experience no? as points to ponder. And on the third stage, which is Identification, meaning, again, uh, if identification is coupled with meaning, there is a response, a brand response that involves judgments, quality, credibility, consideration, superiority, and feelings no, on the emotional side. And, of course, once the consumer responded to your identification and meaning activities, there is so-called relationship, long-lasting relationship, which involves loyalty, product service attachment, and community engagement. So here's a link on some cases that, you know, for further reading and analysis, no? the value of Starbucks brand using the CBEE model and Apple's declining brand equity. Again, Again, our reference is Kevin Lane Keller, who developed the customer based brand equity model. Uh, and uh, his book is about strategic brand management building, measuring, and managing brand equity global edition. All right, thank you very much for those who continuously follow my channel, who share my channel to others no, to propagate this advocacy of learning. And thank you again for your patience, for listening and watching. Till next time, always keep safe, everyone.